Hello, everybody. This is Katie Joe, and I am a co author on a collaborative book called The Untold Stories of Motherhood. And today we're interviewing one of the main authors in the book, my co author, also a longtime personal friend. And we're here to ask you a couple questions about your chapter. The vision for the book was, of course, to tell the stories of motherhood that we often don't see portrayed in media, but these are the stories that need to be heard, they need to be told so mothers don't feel alone. This is Keisha Caldwell. Would you like to tell a little bit about your chapter? Who do you feel like benefits from the chapter? How do you see this benefiting right now, even in your world? How is this changing things for you? Um, yeah, so my name is Keisha Caldwell. I, um, I'm a licensed therapist and I work in Utah, Nevada. And, um, when Katie Joe invited me to work on this collaboration, um, about 10 times I said no, <laughs> <laughs> because this is, it's so personal, right. To, to share about our motherhood journeys. And, um, I'm a mother of six. And five of them are teenagers right now. And so I'm questioning whether I did anything right. I don't know if anyone's <laughs> ever been there <laughs> as a teen parent, but, um, but that, is, that is where I'm at. And so, um, so yeah, I said no a lot of times, but I'm, I'm glad in the end that I said, I'm gonna do something that scares me and put myself out there. And, and really it was, for, it was for those moms that are like, um, am I doing it all wrong? Am I messing up my kids? <laughs> Is there a way to recover <laughs> from any and all of this? Um, and it was to give hope. I think if anything else, I think my, my main message was to give hope to those moms and, and to remind myself that, um, that, you know, we're all messing it up. <laughs> and, and that's and that's okay we will we will get through it all the rest of us adults here survived our childhood and um and our children will too <laughs> so. that's what therapy is for <laughs> absolutely absolutely so, there's a couple things that I really 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 want to touch on with your chapter and one of them is the journey of, because you have not only just a million kids, no, no, no critics, <laughs> but for me, one of the most inspiring things about your chapter that I feel like so many women can take away from is with so many children and at 1.5 kids under five, um, you went back to school to get your yeah. degree at a time like, and I was a single mom and I couldn't see any way to do that. I don't know how you did that at all. But part of why I love that in your chapter is because I feel like so many single moms don't feel like they can. And I, I was your friend watching how hard it was through all of that. Mm -hmm. But I also have seen you come out on the other side of that. And when I was in my single mom time, I, I, I didn't go back to school. I did for just a tiny brief stint, but I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And you have been a huge inspiration for me in my life in many ways, but be, mainly because like, as hard as it was, I can now see that it was all worth it. And what you're able to provide for your children now and the lifestyle that you're able to and build your own schedule in many ways. And the way that you're also helping so many other families because you were dedicated to that. That's one. But one of my favorite excerpts of your um, chapter is where you told the tiny little story of where you were a kid being raised by a single mom who, you know, you guys had a hard time. You were in Las Vegas and how, as an adult, you were saying, yeah, grandma likes to roller skate. She loves to roller <laughs> skate. Um, she used to yeah. roller skate to work for fun. And your mom corrected you and she, you, and she said, no, I roller skated to work because I didn't have money for gas. And what, a, yeah. because part of the reason that story matters is because we don't understand what our parents are going through. Yeah. And I don't understand what my parents went through and my kids don't understand what we went through. And just that story helps me so much as a mother. Also, just they don't understand and we don't understand and we're just doing the best we can. Yeah. 
So those are my two favorite things. I want to turn it over to you just because I love that about your chapter. Thanks, Katie. Yeah, I, um, you know, that story is so funny. My mom, um, she got my first signed copy of my book. And um, I think I, in, when I, in the inscription, I wrote, thanks for loving me, even when I made it hard. Yeah. And, um, and she texted me the other day. She's like, she was waiting for me. She's helping me move my office and she's sitting in the parking lot. She says, I'm reading your chapter for the fourth time. <laughs> and I was like, that's the, that's the kind of mom I have, right? Like she is my biggest cheerleader. She sends me all kinds of people that think social workers can do anything, including web design and marketing and all <laughs> kinds of because you can. You have nothing to do with what I do, but, but I can, I can do anything in my, in the eyes of my mom. And, um, and I think as a child, I didn't, I didn't see my mom in that way, but now as an adult, my mom can do anything. Like she really can do anything. And I had this beautiful experience of being able to go to Africa with her. And I share about that a little bit in our chapter about all of the miracles she created just to get there. And then to also be able to see her, you know, talk to the women and, and, um, and share her story. And, and she gave away a little um, hat to an albino child at one of the schools we visited who, and that hat had like special meaning to her, but she gave it anyway, because she didn't want that child to get burned um, by the bright sun. And so just, just little things that I've seen my mom do throughout my life. And, um, and as a teenager, I didn't see it. I didn't understand it. I didn't give her credit for it. I rejected it, honestly. And I share a little bit about that and, and our healing process um, in my chapter as well. And, and that really has been a, a beautiful experience just to be able to process that as I wrote it and then to share it with all of you. It's vulnerable. It's real. Um, it's also accountable. And, um, and I'm grateful for that opportunity. Well, and I think what you, what you're saying and what I agree with and what I, what I, my experience, but also with hearing you too, is what a lot of this book is not just healing, like our, our motherhood journey, like our own internal conversation about how we've showed up as mothers. But a lot of this, as I've written and all the other authors have, have shared is how powerful it's been to heal the relationship going backward and having compassion for our own mothers, no matter how they show up too. So it's, it's this multi-generational um, window that we're in. How are you seeing this in your um, practice? Are you implementing this? Are you sharing this? Absolutely. In fact, um, Katie, you're one of the authors in the book as well. In fact, this is your, your passion project and you're throughout the whole book. And I was sitting with a client the other day and, and um, my client was grieving and we read your chapter together. And it was such a beautiful process. I gifted her a copy of our book and it really just allowed her the opportunity to grieve and to feel like someone got her. I, I had never lost a child. I've never been in that experience. And we share, you shared that in the book and it really helped this grieving parent. And so it's not just my chapter that's really serving and, and helping people. It's, it's all of them. Um, there, I think we covered so many different topics of motherhood and, and all of the, the caveats of motherhood and the judgments about motherhood. And, you know, are you a really a mother? If you haven't had kids, are you really a mother? If you're a pet mom, are you really, you know, yes, we are all nurturing feminine mothers and, um, and we all have that opportunity to show up in that way. And so that's what I love, love, love about this book is, not only my chapter, which was a healing process for me and hope I help other people with that, but I've learned so much from all of the other authors and women that have contributed as well. Oh, me too. I love it too. So tell, tell people how they can find you, tell people about your business, tell people if they want an autographed copy, how they can track it down from you. Yeah. So, um, so my website is intentionalmh.com, like intentional mental health. So intentionalmh.com. You can also Google my name, Kasia Caldwell.com. Uh, it's a little harder to spell. So Tell like me what, Asia with the K it's Asia with the K then everybody Asia with the K. Yeah. 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 Um, and, um, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram as well. 
Um, but you can order the, a copy, a signed copy of the book directly through the website. Um, it'll be right there on my home page for you to click on and order, and then we'll we'll send you a signed copy right away. Um, my practice is the Intentional Living Academy. I'm located in Las Vegas, Nevada. I have physical offices here. I also am licensed in the state of Utah, so I do telehealth and coaching services uh, in Utah and Nevada, and coaching services really all over the country. So, um, yeah. well, I am just. It's been such a gift to do this book. And a big part of the gift was to work with so many people that are my friends and people who inspire me, which you are, you know, top of the list. So thank you so, thank you. so, so much. It's been such an honor and I just love and adore you. So thank you. And we'll love sign you. Off.